<coughs> All right, I call to order the January 23rd, 2017 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, uh, recorded by ACMI. First up on the agenda this evening is a discussion regarding 2017 annual town meeting warrant articles. Uh, we'll begin with Jenny. Great, thank you, Andrew. Um, I actually, the, the, you have a suite of warrant articles in your packet. The first page is proposed zoning warrant articles. Then there's like another set of articles, A through D, it goes on the opposite page. Those are town bylaw, town warrant articles. And then the last two pages are um, a citizen proposed warrant article for zoning. So just so we know what we're talking about, all these items relate to this agenda item. So on the first uh, proposed zoning warrant article, uh, warrant zoning bylaw amendments warrant articles, I actually, Laura's gonna talk about articles A and B. Um, I think <clears throat> we'd first discuss this with you back in December. Um, article A is to um, slightly adjust or tweak the um, mixed use bylaw. Um, the, the, the dimensional regulations for, um, <clears throat> for mixed use all have something um, in the dimensional and density regulations called minimum lot area per dwelling unit, which um, we have found from all, all of the developers who have come in looking for permits with, uh, for mixed use have said that that is a, <clears throat> a difficult um, requirement because what it ends up doing is it, it limits the number of units, but since the area is, that's allowed is larger, it, it pushes them towards larger units. Um, and I think we had really wanted to see a mix of unit sizes, small and large, and um, it's standing in the way of that. Um, that mix occurring. So uh, there were some other things we had talked about previously, but I think we decided to keep it simple this time because of the commitment we made not to make a lot of zoning changes this year. So what this article will allow us to do is to remove the requirement for lot area per dwelling unit in all of the mixed use, com all the commercial zones where mixed use is allowed, which is all of the commercial zones. <coughs> Um, you know, my big thing on Warren articles is to keep them as flexible as possible so that you're never out of scope uh, mm -hmm. if anything comes up. And I guess my question is, is why wouldn't you change this to say in business zones, uh, well, first off, why would you say in business zones? Why wouldn't you say for mixed use development? Just because the, it is, uh, it's in business zones and industrial zones, but industrial yeah. zones don't allow I, residential, don't so there's no requirement. But the, the point residence. is, is what does yeah. in business zones add? You're right. You know, and yep. if if for some it's reason there was something you wanted to do, mm -hmm. actually it's it's not it's broad, not broad enough. enough. It's not yeah. broad enough. So I would take out in business zones. Okay. And then why not say by reducing or removing the minimum lot area? Let's just say that you know for some reason we don't think we can get you know, a, a full removal, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, at the very least, we can we can have the public hearing yeah. on whatever it is that's come up, mm -hmm. and maybe there is stronger uh, desire for a reduction or, or something like that. I guess, mm -hmm. once again, because of scope and the need to keep the article, you know, any any final recommendations within the scope of the article itself, if you decided, oh, Crap, we, we, you know, we wish we had just halved everything, right? Or something like that. That would have been good enough, um, or something like that. Then, um, you know, that that would, that might that might help. Yep. Um, now, having said that, if you want it to be all or nothing, uh, that's perfectly fine. No, it's just I think that reducing it would be better than nothing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's more my point. Mm -hmm. So, so I would say by reducing or removing. Um, area per unit square feet, um, and and so that's that was my take on that was to once again try to keep it as as uh, flexible as possible. <coughs> I mean, you could even say by reducing and or removing, and really keep it flexible because maybe there's some zones that you want to keep it in, some zones that you want to remove it. Okay. Any other, David? So is there? Uh, 
either a best practice or, or a sweet spot for um, encouraging an appropriate balance between larger and smaller units because I'm thinking particularly in the case of affordable housing um, sometimes there's a need for larger units mm -hmm. for families mm -hmm. and we and we wouldn't want to um, create a situation where uh, there weren't enough larger units right. available. Um, the, the state, the Department of Housing and Community Development requires that 10% of all affordable units be three bedroom. So that, I think, takes care of that. Mm -hmm. And and the, the uh, developments that you approved do have that. They yeah. each have a, like one or two three bedrooms. So they have a preponderance of two bedrooms. And I think that affordable housing developers kind of know what they need. And so they're, they might continue to build larger units. But the, it was the, um, the Housing Corporation of Arlington's architect that suggested that they would have preferred to maybe have a different mix or have more units in the same area. It doesn't make the building bigger or more dense, but they could potentially have more units which would serve more households. Mm -hmm. But there's no, there's no generally accepted best um, practice for, you know, how to set this appropriately. No, but I will just say that the a number of different communities that I looked at, including Watertown and Brookline, ha do not have a lot area per dwelling unit um, requirement within for mixed use. Okay. It's it's more for open development houses on a lot. Right. It, it's not really for mixed use in buildings, and I think that's why it's a good idea to allow flexibility. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? I, I did have one other edit. I think you need the word requirement after unit square feet requirement. Uh, we'll go to amend the uh, table of uh, uh, for mixed yeah. use. Yeah, you think mm -hmm. you need the word requirement. Mm -hmm. okay. And once again, I mean, if we think that we don't want to potentially give people the opportunity to do that, you know, uh, to reduce it versus, you know, if we want it to be all or nothing once again, then that's just something that, but otherwise I'd say reducing it. Okay. Good. Do you want to vote on each one? No, just do we, we vote on the just do slate at the end. Sounds good. Gotcha. Yeah, and keep in mind, these are just placeholders for now. The warrant, yeah. the town meeting warrant closes Friday, so these have to be in then. If, if there are other questions as far as best practices, as far as specific changes that we want to make after we have a public hearing, they'll come in and we do that in March. So, but <clears throat> we do want to keep them, want to keep them as vague, uh, or not as vague, but as broad and open-ended as possible in case we do decide to change things at that point. So moving on to Article B, Laura. Yes, and this is also an adjustment to something that we adopted last year, the um, definition for artisanal fabrication which is the, um, uh, it's, it's like it's a small manufacturing kind of use, but also includes creative um, arts uses, woodworking and things like that, and also includes, includes commercial kitchens and breweries, and um, something that I think people are quite interested in seeing, and, then, and those are both two industries that are growing. Um, our new economic development coordinator, Ali Carter, suggested to me that um, the 5,000 square foot maximum that is in the definition is too small. It's, that You would never get a brewery that was under 5,000 square feet. You might get a, a commercial kitchen, but if it does well, it's going to want to grow beyond 5,000 square feet. And be sad to be feet. kicking them out at that point. Right, mm -hmm. right. And th there's a, I don't think there's any reason why we need to limit it that way. I think it was just, um, when we did it last year, it was just a way to kind of go slow. Mm -hmm. Questions? Same point on this one. Yeah. Except just the opposite by saying by increasing and or removing mm -hmm. um, the maximum square foot area requirement. Just, just, I think this I, one is to me a slam dunk. I mean, it'd be <laughs> sad that the person goes up by, you know, a thousand square feet and we're kicking them out of town. That makes yeah. uh, <laughs> no sense whatsoever. So completely agree, but just to keep flexibility. Any other 
questions or comments on Article B? Article C. All right, so Article C and then all of the next articles I'm gonna discuss with also inviting up Steve McKenna and Winnell Evans. Steve and Winnell serve on the residential study group, which as you all know, is a subgroup of the zoning recodification working group um, working on the revamp of the zoning bylaw and the residential study group has been uh, having many conversations and uh, conducting a lot of research and doing a lot of work around thinking about what types of interventions should we think about in the zoning bylaw and also the town bylaw now that can help to address neighbor concerns about new residential construction in existing neighborhoods so that's what we've been charged with and so we come to you with uh, these recommendations. So, Stephen Winnell, okay. have you come sit at the table with us, please? Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. <coughs> Winnell, do you want to start? I'll go first. Um, Winnell Evans, Orchard Place. And um, I'm just going to fill you in very briefly on the history of, of um, this article. This was brought up at last year's town meeting. And there was a lot of citizen interest in this article because of the safety issue. But it was not properly expressed, and it did not define the slope as being limited to downward driveways. So many people raised the issue of, well, what happens with a driveway that goes up, and why should we be worried about the slope? And the whole thing, um, I, I think that was a, a major issue um, that caused it to fizzle. But people were indeed interested in the, the safety issue. And what we found out is that Arlington currently has no um, regulation of driveway grade at all. And some of the grades are as great as 28%, which is really significant. Um, the Mass DOT recommends believe, between 10 and 15, um, I believe. Cambridge is as uh, 7.2, I think. Um, so we're, we're really kind of an outlier um, in terms of, of regulating this. And um, you can imagine when you're backing out of a driveway that's almost at a 30 degree angle, you really do not see anybody coming from either direction who's going to be crossing behind you. You're, you're essentially seeing sky. So I think a lot of people who live in, in neighborhoods where we have the garage under situation who have kids were, were very concerned about this. Um, so that was the, the beginning of this bylaw. And I'll turn it over to Steve. <clears throat> so um, with that, we realize, and thank you very much for having us come, um, with a lot of the discussions, we looked upon it, again, from the original Town Warren article there, there was a significant concern about these new constructions that were being built, predominantly in East Arlington. And because of the size of the lots and the configuration of the lots and the frontage, that you're getting at these garage unders. And I'll agree that, you know, I think the way the article was written put a lot of concern on a lot of people and how it affected homeowners and, and for people who wanted to live in the community. So in the last few months of our meetings, <coughs> we started recognizing that there is potential opportunities to try to make adjustments that could benefit developers, benefit homeowners, and more importantly, be more safe to the community and more appealing to people living in the neighborhood. Um, and in doing so, myself and a few of our committee members came up with a few proposals and suggestions that we try to consider for the future. And that's why this warrant article was drafted, to give us some flexibility and to at least make note of that. And should I speak specifics of some yeah. of the things? Yes. So well. some of the things that, and I don't have my notes in front of me, but the way we looked upon it is the current zoning bylaws, and based upon East Arlington being the predominant area where all these developments are occurring, is a more urban setting. The developers, because the zoning bylaws that were drafted, were limited to only putting the garage unders due to the fact that if you had, um, you weren't allowed to have two curb cuts, so that eliminated a situation there. And the zoning bylaws also mandate and require that you have two parking spaces behind the front foundation wall for each unit. So virtually that's impossible to put it on a main level if it's a straight lot, flat lot like most of them are in East Darlington, that you'd be putting two car garages inside the dwelling. So therefore, developers started looking upon it from a, a rational standpoint. The only way to do it is put the garage under it. So you're building the foundation, cut a hole in it, and make it, steep it down. And as Winnell had mentioned, there was really no specific determination of zoning bylaws about the grade. So these became sort of the normal for the last five or seven years. 
in looking at this and understanding where I think the concerns are, we came back with a couple of proposals to look at and to offer some options and flexibilities to potentially deter developers from developing these. But if they have to, there's going to be certain requirements. And the first is, and these are just suggestions again, if you decide to put in a two-car garage under, then you have to be a minimum, instead of 25 feet from the front yard setback, we're going to push you back 30 feet. So therefore, we'll get a 15% grade. But in doing so, the developer is going to lose a certain amount of size of the house because you still have to have a certain amount of open space in the rear lot line. So it says, great, if you want to do it, we'll give that to you, but we're taking something away from you. Another option was that if you decide that you don't want to do the garage owners, but you still need to provide the parking, we'll consider allowing you to put in the garage as you drive straight through. There will be a parking space on the main level, but instead of two car parking behind the front down foundation wall, you're only required to have one car parking. So if you envision you've got your square box, you're going to take a 20 by 20 area to make that your first garage, 20 by 8 garage parking area. We'll give you that, so we'll eliminate the two car garage behind the front foundation wall. You can put one car within the main level area of the living area, another parking space in the driveway, which if you look out there, most people now are parking their cars in the driveways. The garages are filled with bikes, lawnmowers, and so forth. So people are parking their driveways anyways. If we give you that option, then we'll also give you a provision where the garage is not going to be used as living space, as far as your gross living area, floor area calculations. And as in a provision, since we're creating, eliminating living space for you, we will then limit your open space requirement in the real lot line, which is typical, from 25 feet to 20 feet. You have to have a 25 percentage, but we'll make it smaller for you in one direction so that you don't have to have a come up with the 25 feet. So we're taking something away from you, but we're going to give something for you. We look at that, that it makes what it appears to me, and there's been a few of these built on Park Street um, by a developer a few years ago. They're quite attractive. Um, and we feel as though that responds to a lot of the concerns from not only the, the safety factor, which has been a concern coming across, but physically it will look a lot more appealing from the outside and it will be that much more attractive. And also it doesn't hurt the developer. It actually brings some of the developer's costs down. The third option is if the site doesn't allow for that, then we'll give you the option of doing a two curb cuts. Now, one of the problems we have with two curb cuts, and there was a property done on Beacon Street last year when the town word article was proposed, the developer said, great, I don't have to do garage unders, I'm going to do two curb cuts. The developer did two curb cuts. The problem is on a 60-foot lot, the average these houses are 40 feet, these duplexes, because when you think of the 40 feet for the house, each unit then is 20 feet. But then you have to take two feet away for the studs, so you have an 18-foot wide unit. So they were putting in a 40-foot house, and they had 10 feet on each side. By having the 10 feet on each side, the parking space is 8.5 by 18 feet, which is required. The problem is you can't open up your car doors. You can only open up one side. If you try to open up the passenger side, you now you're potentially opening up into a fence or into your neighbor's yard. So we looked at it and then said, well, let's do this. If they're not going to do the garage unders, and we've taken that away from them because there's some opportunities that they get restrictions and they can't or feel as though construction-wise it doesn't make sense to do the garage in the living space area, that will give you two curb cuts. The first thing we'll do is we'll again allow one car parking behind the front foundation wall, but we're going to have to take away the 10-foot setback and make it a 12-foot setback. So you're going to have to make a smaller house. You'll have to do a 36-foot wide house. But it's, it's better for the neighborhood and it allows us to then provide a buffer zone for landscaping. So that way you've got a little bit of a buffer area between you and the neighbor and you don't have typical, and not picking on them, but Medford, you've got pavement against pavement. It's just not that appealing, not that attractive. So we create somewhat of a buffer area. And then again, the parking space will be in front of that. So we tried to look at what is best for everyone and how to work in harmony that it's not only safe, but it's appealing, it's attractive, and it sustains values and interest in for the areas where people are building. Mm -hmm. Questions? Thank okay. you, Steve. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. First off, I'm so excited. Thank you 
both for working together on this uh, and the whole group. I actually, I have to, I have to credit um, Elizabeth Pyle, who's a member yep. who's not here tonight, because she. That's too really bad because I would, she's... I would tell her the same, and I know she was a force last year. Yeah. I just because this is the way things get done and the way they get done well. So I'm, I'm just really. This is my last art meeting, and this is the first time this has happened in the six years I've been here. So it's great. I'm glad to see. So that's just my my commentary on it. Um, I'm gonna actually be pedantic and just kind of what I did. You may have heard me do it on A and B. My concern about what you've done here is I'm just a little bit concerned about scope. Um, and if we put this into the Warren article. Have you gone over it with town council? Uh, yes, the, uh, town okay. council has reviewed, reviewed all of this. So the, the one comment from down, town council on this one yeah. is that we, depending upon your interest, we might unbundle all that, of these things. That was exactly yeah. my, that it was going to be. It's a little crowded. Well, not only is it crowded, but here's my we concern. Don't lose yeah, if you if you lost something, does it lose everything? Right. That's my other concern, right? It, it's kind of like, um, um, yeah, so as far as the bundling is concerned, my concern is is if, if someone doesn't like this one thing, the whole thing could go by the wayside. And, you know, it might be the Residential Study Committee gets up and says, no, we want the package, you know, and, you know, from our, uh, when, you get, when you folks vote on it eventually or whatever else, your recommendation might be all or nothing, right? But you may want to give people the opportunity to kind of unbundle this. And that would be my biggest concern with it, is if, if someone doesn't like one thing, you might lose the whole, the whole, uh, the whole thing. Good so so that would be, that'd be my biggest thing. And then, um, and, uh, so, so that's, that's really my biggest, my mm -hmm. biggest uh, uh, mm -hmm. question on that. And I'm not exactly sure how we would take the vote on it is my biggest. You would, whatever you decide tonight would be as amended, and then I'm gonna have to amend it and work with Doug to get the final language okay. and then submit it by Friday to okay. the board of selectmen. Okay. Okay, so good. that's kind of with any of these, all these tweaks mm -hmm. will be. But I think that's a question for the two of you as far yeah. as how you feel about mm -hmm. unbundling it too. I think it makes sense. I think okay. it's gonna be easier for the average person to understand and to read right. and also for it to be taken on its own merits. Mm -hmm. I do think if you do unbundle it, it's going to be very important for all of you to bring your own opinions that mm -hmm. they should be bundled to bear at me at the meeting itself. Because what you may find is if you unbundle it, then the different, I'm going to use a word here, factions might just go after their own pieces mm -hmm. and the good work that you folks have done, you know, as far as finding a common ground could yeah. could go out the window. That's so. So I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth. I kind of yeah. like the bundling because this is your deal. Um, but the but it does concern me that you know if you lose one, you might lose all. So okay. Anyway, that's my comment. Okay, I, I would echo what uh, Mike said. I highly recommend, encourage, to unbundle it and separate it, and say the driveway slope for safety is one thing, mm -hmm. and that stands on its own. Mm -hmm. And then maybe have something else say, okay, uh, the parking of cars. I, I really like what you guys did. I think it's a real good compromise of you know, having several choices, either having mm -hmm. two driveways or having, mm -hmm. if you go under, you have to set it back a little bit, or if you, if you put them on the side to a tandem. I think those are all good options, good all choices that you can, if you guys feel that's good, put that as another one, and that could be D or one could be C1, C2, mm -hmm. to say, look, this is for your safety, for down, where, where it goes down, does it go up, new construction, for pure safety. I think that would be a real easy thing to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is about um, how you work, how you put uh, parking in, you bring up the East, East, uh, East Arlington. East Arlington, okay, well, how do we address this that, that's making theater? We can bring that up and talk about that and say that, okay, if we do go under, it goes back. I like that. Uh, or we go, if we do uh, um, side parking or two curbs. Mm -hmm. you know, I really like the fact that two curbs with a smaller house is a good compromise. Uh, allowing you to have you know, some vegetation on the side and separation from the driveways. Yeah. It, it will, uh, I'm sorry, but it will work. One of the slight concerns that we would always have with two curb cuts is at some point if it becomes continuous, you then limit parking on the street. 
So there's something we have to look at mm -hmm. on how that's mm -hmm. going to be addressed mm -hmm. and, and appropriated. Um, yeah, you're taking away all the... Right. No, that's, that's a good point. Um, <coughs> but, you know, and, and I think the idea of, in, you know, the C1, C2 <coughs> might be a way that we can propose them individually, but collectively mm -hmm. they have to be approved because I think otherwise it could cause issues with um, approving one part, but then the others don't get accepted, and now we have issues. <coughs> okay, that's, that's a good point. I, see, I don't you know, know if that can happen. I think you present them as separate articles. You you each each you, option. You, you right. insert them as separate okay. warrant articles, but you present them as a whole. <coughs> and that's in conversation with the town moderator and yeah. others. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Indeed. Well, I I like the uh, fifteen percent as a separate one, and then the other ones as a bundle. Okay. Because it, it's interesting to create these options. I mean, this is the first time I've heard someone kind of rationally say you, you do A, B, or C. So that's my take on it, that you want to take, you want to take them all. Um, I'm a little, you guys are saying individually propose them, but I, I think they're strong as a bundle. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, Andy. Yeah. And, and yeah. having sat in on these meetings, I I see that. gone through the thought process that got us here, I'd agree with that. Because the idea is to, <clears throat> the idea isn't to say no and specifically prohibit yeah. the driveway slopes that go down. The idea is to reduce them by giving developers and, and builders incentives to not do them. Mm -hmm. And so by keeping them together, you keep all those incentives together as a package. So I'd agree with that statement. I mean, you could do a, what maybe what, um, what Mike is saying and kind of say recommend it as a bundle or if there's, you know, yeah. if suddenly there's a groundswell that one of them is so desired, you, you might have the option. But I, I agree. I think it's it's it nice, right. nice. Mixed use and the parking reduction somewhat went together in, in the same yeah. fashion, but obviously didn't belong together. So we can yeah. figure out a way to communicate that at town meeting. But I just want to understand, so you're saying break off one, uh, the first, the 15% grade as a It's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's pure safety. All of the others are bundled together that's in a separate saying, article? Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay. mm -hmm. that's very good. Mm -hmm. And one last thing, before, at some point, could you give <laughs> Jenny, or some of those examples you had in various different places, because oh, yeah. 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 I want to go see them myself, because this is this. Oh, you, the real life examples. Yeah, yeah. the ones you mentioned. Yeah, we have yeah. those. Yeah. Okay. We have those, and we'll have examples to Sorry. present. David. So, I, I'm thinking, of, just in terms of strategy, I like the bundling. Yeah. And having it all. Yeah, I can definitely see it because it it will. Uh, you know, the the factions, for lack of a better word, yeah. have found common ground to bring this proposal forward. And uh, I think by keeping it bundled together, you keep that consensus together so that nobody is tempted uh, to, uh, you know, try to, try to get what the piece they wanted and vote down the rest of it um, in, in, in town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it, it is, a really good compromise that uh, that I think uh, gives everybody mostly what they wanted, um, you know, addresses a safety issue and gives developers a, a number of options uh, for building uh, things that, that will sell. Um, so um, I'm not sure um, on, uh, from the legal side of things. Um, you know what would happen if there's significant opposition to one or more pieces of this if it is if it continues to be bundled well, it could be amendments and substitute it, yeah I, so, think, I think that's the case and i think yeah, the moderator so, could yeah. figure out right. what he wants on that so I, yeah. I i can see that yeah but i i think i think it supports it supports the the consensus that has been reached by by um the study group to keep it bundled. Yeah, and I, and I want to say, you know, Mike gave credit to, to Stephen Winnell and, and Elizabeth Piles deserves credit too, but every member. Oh, I meant every member, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, every oh, member fine. of that group, I think this was uh, one issue that from the beginning we found that there was some consensus on and everyone worked very hard to get something that was, uh, it was a compromise, but it was the kind of compromise that actually leaves everyone satisfied in the end, where no one feels like they've given anything up to get mm -hmm. to, to the final result. And I think that that's why it's such a strong article. Then 
I just to be clear, I was just pointing that out. Um, I'm fine if the proponents and the board. I can definitely see the reasons for keeping it all together, and I think to that extent, it's fine with me. So. Okay. And if, if I might add just one other separate side note. <coughs> One of the reasons why I'm here is because it was so vocal with regards to the concerns about the warrant articles that came up. And it wasn't that I didn't appreciate what they were trying to do, but they didn't make sense. And I had made a comment that every action had a reaction. And if we look at the bylaws and we look at the proposed warrant articles that were made last year, this type of a format can work quite well on many of the issues that are facing the zoning bylaws and the problems with new construction mm -hmm. and development. There is, I think, a benefit for giving incentives and taking away something so that we can then somewhat control and be satisfied with the development that's being built. Because what's being built now is based upon what was written specifically in the bylaws, and it was, it's how you interpret them. And I think that's what's caused a lot of issues. So if we can take the interpretation out of it and give potential options, it creates a wider range for a lot of people to be more satisfied with what's being built in the town. I completely agree. Yeah. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Did you want to vote on these three? Because these are the only ones that we were actually. Uh, yes, because the other are ones aren't. The other are. So yeah, the other ones. I just want to be clear, clear now. So we're not separating. We're going we're to bundle it back together. We'll bundle it together. It sounds like. Sounds I think that's the like consensus. Together. Yeah. Because I think that's the kind of. Um, that's what I want. No fragile, but uh, well, that's, that's fine. I, 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 can, I can see both ways, but the way it's written right here to me right now is confusing. Um, Maybe because I'm so, I'm, you know, you guys are working on it, but I just, I just when I first look at this, it just looks like I, I think it, it could just be a formatting issue, yeah, um, because it looks like a lot of words and it's and and the what and each section isn't clearly delineated. Could you, I mean, yeah. could you do it in, with bullet points? It's um, it's yeah. just the warrant article oh, placeholder that's true. language. That, yeah, it's I think not that the actual article okay. itself. So yeah. we'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll have it, a lot more. We'll edit it once we get there. and get, make it we'll, more clear. And, and I think part of part of the issue, part right, of the, yeah. not the yeah. issue yeah. here, but, but <laughs> getting to yes, getting to a positive vote at town meeting will be in the presentation. Uh, and I think with members of that group coming up and assisting in the presentation, we'll be able to get the intent across mm -hmm. and not lose anything in translation. Well, and, and I think the other thing too, Kim, from my perspective is, is this is the thing that goes in the warrant article and then the recommended vote is going to be much more specific mm -hmm. and lay it right. out, right? It's going to say, uh, e okay. the, the recommended, when, when you guys finally get this down, right. you're going to have to say, you know, Section six is hereby deleted. Blah blah blah. You know, and, okay, and actually, kind of okay. just piece it out. Because I'm not really comfortable with weights. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, no, I don't disagree. And Mike's right. That that will change significantly by the time this gets to. Okay. And it is repetitive in a way when you read it, but you have to repeat the different sections that need to be amended. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in the warrant. Okay. Yeah. So I'll move uh, uh, to. Let's see. Where yeah, yeah, I did it <laughs> so well last say? year, right? <laughs> Move to approve articles A through C to be submitted at the request of the Redevelopment Board uh, to the Board of Selectmen in the warrant um, as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You seconded last year. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> 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 I just read it. <laughs> Good. Thank okay. you. Good job. No, nice. I, I mean, I, nice job on that because. Yeah, they getting everyone together is a great thing. That's no, yeah. it's just it's really nice to see. So I'm very yes. happy about that. It doesn't happen. No. I'm glad it did. That no. that group has actually done a lot of good work to That's get great. to in a short time. Uh, they've met a lot. They've worked hard. Um, so they deserve all the credit in the world. No, I really appreciate. Speaking it. Speaking of that, they've gone past zoning. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> warrant articles into general town bylaw articles, and that's what we have. Next, so we won't vote on these necessarily. This is really just an overview. Actually, um, I or spoke with the town council and the town manager, and it would be great if you would vote on them the right. same way in which, and you could say inter in, you could say inserted at the request of the residential study group and the redevelopment board. He says often warrant articles have two, um, you know, peop, uh, groups making that request. Okay. It's the same thing to have okay. happen. So it's. 
um, that's, that's the request. So I think the, the problem I see yeah. is these aren't the zoning bylaws. Right, no, understood. Yeah. So okay. we don't. We can make it to put them in the warrant, but once we get to the hearings, we wouldn't hold a hearing on these. That would be the board of selectmen to hear town bylaw. But so would we vote on these to go to? You're just voting on recommending the them to the board of selectmen. selectmen. Okay. That's all to so include in the. It's warrant. our support or not support. It's basically your support. Okay. So that is my understanding from you, council and. You could find some people thinking that's overreaching. And do we have it's authority to, to you what, um, propose a non-zoning warrant article? Well, that's that's my concern. Is that these are general town bylaws? Yes. That's well, why well, my understanding is that we wouldn't vote on them, but somebody has to recommend them. The residential study group um, didn't exactly vote on them to be put on the warrant. I can, of course, reconvene the group and get them to officially vote, but um, somebody needs to vote to recommend them to the board of selectmen. Well, the Board of Selectmen can do their own. They can always add something in their sure. own in their own name. Um, uh, well, do you want to talk them through first before we talk about what needs to happen then? Well, what would be from, from my perspective, I, I just I get a little bit concerned about being perceived as overreaching, um, which I think we're often, we've often been accused of, uh, uh, of of that in the past. I don't know, David, you've been in town meeting for a while. Um, but, um, uh, and, and I don't know whether it helps these three if we opine on them. That's uh, in this way, in this way. But, uh, but I, I don't know that I, I care all that much. I, I would always vote for anything to go into the warrant article, uh, in the warrant, because all that says is, we may or may not have something for you town meeting on these points, right? It's kind of like I'll sign anyone's petition to run for office because God bless them if they want to, so. Um. So when we formed the residential study group, the pathway that we told them to take for bylaw amendments was to go to, it was the residential study group, to the uh, zoning recodification working group, to the uh, master plan implementation committee, and then to the redevelopment board for any bylaw changes. We didn't specify, you know, what would happen if you had a town bylaw change. So I, I just want to make sure that I communicate that to you. Um, you could, there's actually four articles here. There's your one on the back. Um, I'm not sure I can support any of these, some of, most of these. Okay. That's my first reading of this. I mean, we can talk about it, but I just. I haven't thought about this. So I read through it, and the first one is kind of to me about notification and um, providing a plan mm -hmm. that could be reviewed by the building inspector. B, C, and D are, B is protection, waste, construction materials. C is protection of open foundations, best practices, excavation practices. And D is noise. So what I would think, is, I guess my inclination, if I was voting on it, would be to say, look, um, notification and providing a plan that would address B, C, and D. Best practices for foundation, protection of fa uh, best practices for wastes, control protection of foundations and noise. So you have to you have to provide a plan to the building inspector which addresses these things. To me that's probably the way I want to vote rather than saying at this point you got to take measures to remove to uh, the following measures or you'll be penalized for foundation protection, waste removal or noise. I'm not ready to to tell the building inspector how to regulate those three things. I don't know enough about it. I'm not enough of an expert in those kinds of things. So. If I might, um, one, I might ask if you want to talk about the construction, because the whole, the foundation of all of this conversation why don't you, actually Yeah, why don't you get into that, that and fill in? And then the building inspector, and b both building inspectors actually participate in this group. Um, so we have, and the town manager and um, other town staff have participated. 
and then uh, a whole host of other people who we've, we've already talked about. Mm. Um, this is all around this good neighbor agreement, which we sort of previewed maybe the last, maybe a couple of meetings ago. And this construction of control type of agreement would address all kinds of different issues. It basically codifies many of the things that we're already doing, mm -hmm. but then in the agreement, we found many things that did not align with town bylaws, so they needed to be amended. So the things that you see here, Articles A through D um, are those things that, with town council's assistance and the assistant town manager's assistance, we identified as issues that need to be amended in order to have a more sound construction control agreement. The reason for the construction control agreement is because um, while the driveway issue and the zoning bylaw issues that we've been talking about are important to address the issues of, around neighbor concerns, a lot of neighbor concerns actually relate to construction. Um, whether it's dust, noise, um, other related issues, not feeling like they have any idea what's happening. So no the notification piece is very important. Um, control of the site um, and a number of other things. Some of those things are protected through existing town bylaws, but a lot of things are not necessarily covered. So these, this suite of articles relates to the things that need to be amended in our town bylaws to allow They're it. actually strengthening and clarifying the existing mm -hmm. bylaws. I don't think there's anything well. specifically new. That's so the, the penalties are already in there in the current bylaw. There are well, penalties that are... That's a zoning you, bylaw penalty. That is, yeah. There are penalties that can be levied by the building department and by inspectional services that are already in there. Um, that are already in the zoning bylaw, it's in a separate section. We're not addressing that, or just referring back to that with these zoning articles to let people know that they do exist. And I just want to add that in terms of you know impact on personnel, town personnel, which is which has come up before, especially with noise um, and with any of the sort of additional construction oversight. Um, if you had read, I don't know if you've read the town manager's proposed FY18 budget but he is discussing um, adding another full-time um, inspector to the Department of Inspectional Services. And part of the reason for that is to engage in more of this residential construction oversight. Yeah, and as Jenny said, both Mike Byrne and Rick Vellarelli have been part of these discussions and have helped to craft these <coughs> proposals. So they've, they understand the ins and outs and have actually made some pretty valuable recommendations as to how they can be enforced. Yeah, I kind of like to hear from them to understand what I might be supporting, if it sounds reasonable, because I think construction controls, and mm -hmm. you're saying some of them are already there, this is strengthening them, they're in favor of them, but now I've got four articles that seem to be related, but what does it all mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can make, I would want to make that determination without hearing directly from the town building inspectors or officials that say, okay, this is what we've got now, and these are specifically what we're refining. I don't know what we have now. I can't tell from this description. Maybe I should be able to. I think the issue is, is this isn't what we do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think that, so the thing that I'm a little bit confused by is, is why didn't the residential study group vote on this? Well, I can, I can then say that we didn't vote on it. We actually agreed to these articles. Yeah. Um, we didn't exactly vote at the end of that, but we could. Well, the only reason I say it is yeah. because you said it would be both of us. Well, no, I'm. And if it were both of us, but if it were both of us, you'd need them anyway. Yeah. And so you don't really need us. I, I understand <clears throat> that. I guess the other. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think different departments can put articles in yeah. as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no, I think the it town can. Manager could as well. I, I think the town manager. Yeah. So yeah. I. That's what I'm thinking. My own thought is, and I think what you're hearing from the yeah. members yeah. is, I'm not sure. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree yeah. with the right spot. I, I, could, could, the, could the inspectional services They can't even it? do yeah. it. Because to be honest with you, if inspectional services recommends it, it it'll See, get a lot That's, yeah. that's it'll, exactly. It'll do a I lot better in town. I want to hear from the experts. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. I don't want to be in a position of recommending something. And, and I don't think that we're necessarily recommending it, just to be clear, just yeah. by putting it in the, yeah. in the warrant. No, so, exactly. so I understand yeah. that point. The, the purpose of this, from, from my perspective, and this was included in your packet, was for us to discuss so that you knew what was happening with yeah. the residential study group. That's why I began my okay. uh, spiel tonight with saying that we were going to be voting on it. Okay. Because my understanding was that they would come from the town manager or the board of selectmen. Yeah. But you said that, group. but then Jenny said... Yeah, the board of selectmen yeah. met tonight for his meeting right now, so we can't have them vote on it. Okay. Between now and Friday, 
So I can go back and talk with Adam, and I'm sure he'll insert it. Okay. Or we can, and with the residential study group. Yeah. So yeah. That's, and then that's I think what we would want to do is have have an opinion. Have an opinion or a recommendation yeah, in our report to town meeting, but and okay. can either endorse or unendorse, but. We don't have to not to vote. No, no, no. no, no, no. Right okay. No. Yeah. So, we, and we can bring back that comes Mike. much later. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a good idea. Construction yeah. control. I just think we need to hear it, understand what we're. Yeah, I, I understand okay. that completely. I, I also, I, I think we we want to make sure that we're uh, not neither perceived to be overreaching mm -hmm. our our authority, uh, but also we want to make sure that we're being consistent with the position that we took in special town meeting mm -hmm. when some of these issues previously came up mm -hmm. around what Actually, was and what, and what was and what was not appropriate to deal with in zoning and zoning is you're the right. purview. That is why we that is why we we did that. And that is why we did we, yeah. we, that's why we did, did that and that's why this discussion went mm -hmm. to town bylaws instead yeah, of through Exactly. Zoning. Mm -hmm. Which I believe is the right approach. Yeah. Um, so again, yep. it's more appropriate. But I don't think we should necessarily, <coughs> you know, put our hands back on it <coughs> since we've taken them off. Right, no, so you're right. But I, I no, you're right. I'll leave it at that. So I think unless you, if you don't mind, Go ahead. unless you have any other feedback or comments about them, just in general or feelings about them in particular, I'll circle back with Adam Chapelain and we'll figure out how to insert these on the warrant yeah no i agree with andy i think we should be with the uh, building officials and have it maybe a discussion sure. with them well it's but later on neither here nor there because yeah. it's not for us to vote on yes anyway. yep so. all, right. all right moving on uh, so, um, this, this last one is really a, again another kind of fyi there's nothing for yes. you to vote on or anything i just am bringing it to your attention um, the only question I had was, I'm assuming someone explained to the proponent that, you know, these aren't these can't be retroactive. Yes. Okay. That's my only question. They did. <laughs> Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That, that was Town Council my did thought that. as well. Yeah. Yes. I figured he had. Yeah, I, I know Doug, and I'm sure he had, but I just figured I'd mention it. So. Yes, that's that would definitely been committed. Okay. Yes. Um, and Miss Thomas actually had been to one of your hearings. Oh yes, I remember. Yes. So that was it on this one. All right. Do you have a question about it? No, but I, I don't like this one. Oh. <laughs> well, you may see it. <laughs> we'll talk about that in March. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. I thought we already did this. So. Well, well, it's it's procedurally it's up to us to bring it back since it's already been put down. If we can decide if it comes up as part of the ARB's purview, uh, whether to support or take action on it, I we would have to right. move it forward. Even though it's brought at the, the behest of 10 registered voters, we have to be the group to move it forward. So we'll be able to make that decision after public hearing. Okay. Actually, just on a proof, just I'm curious, mm -hmm. so can it even make it into the warrant without us actually being the pro proponents of it? No, I don't think it can. Yeah, it shouldn't be able to make it into the warrant. So right. that's that's okay. Uh, and that's I, that so maybe it does. Town yeah. Council's deter final determination. Okay. I advised as such. Okay. Um, there are some wondering. things that are slightly different in there than the way that, that you had voted mm -hmm. it previously. Yep. yep. So no, I noticed find that. that it meets a, a slightly different scope. Okay. That I don't know. What Interesting. Final determination will be. I also this is the most recent version that I had that I printed for you. Could well be have changed. Yeah. So Got it. It's January twentieth is actually the date. Okay. All right. That is it for warrant articles for now. Okay. We'll be back not too long from now. <clears throat> so uh, this was an item that we had tabled two weeks ago uh, as far as ARB properties for fiscal year 18. Then we'll turn it over to Jen Millar to walk us through. <laughs> Laura, would you like to talk about it now? <laughs> <coughs> oh, last no. time. <laughs> <laughs> I took it That's out of your problem. hands last time. So. Jenny. Um, all right, so I don't know how much you all individually or together have really looked at the Urban Renewal Fund and what it means and the different properties. I know obviously having worked with Mike, 
that he's pretty familiar with, um, particularly the Central School building, but probably other buildings as well. Um, and you voted on leases before in my time here, but I, I wanted to kind of have the opportunity, and I'd like to do this as regularly as you would find a value, um, give you sort of just an overview of where things stand with the fund and answer any questions <coughs> you can about who, what spaces are leases are, are leased, what's um, currently available, sort of give you any sense of the <coughs> So each property, we have three properties, uh, 23 Maple Street, the Central School Building, which is also affectionately the Senior Center, um, and the Jefferson Cutter House. Um, Maple Street is right next door to the Central School, so it's basically a single-family home that operates uh, by Northeast Family Incorporated. Um, Central School has seven tenants currently, would have eight, but as you know, a pretty significant uh, state, two state tenants vacated, and I only replaced those two with one tenant, uh, because as you also know, we've been in negotiations with Arlington Center of the Arts through the Memorandum of Understanding. Um, it looks like that could move forward, but that's not final yet. <coughs> and then in the Jefferson Cutter House, we have three tenants, um, Arlington Chamber of Commerce, the Dallin Museum, and the Cutter Gallery, which operates as, uh, it's really like a community room, but also with a gallery, you know, art on the walls um, in that room. So, uh, there's lots of different current capital projects that I can run through if you are interested. And I can also talk about um, future capital projects that I'm planning or in the pipeline. Um, we do go through the capital planning process. If you get a chance to look at the FY18 proposed budget, you'll see it's both an operating and a capital budget. So it talks about the capital plan from FY18 through FY22. And uh, for every year, there's some sort of minimal or significant type of improvement that's called for <coughs> at each one of these buildings. Um, anything from remodeling the kitchen to completely redoing the senior center on the ground floor and the first floor, which is a very significant ask that will be coming up next year. Um, to minor <coughs> things like slate roof repairs to a bigger thing like updating the entire fire alarm system. Um, uh, and I'm glad to talk about any of these things. Mostly I wanted to get the information in front of you and, um, you know, first answer any questions. Mike. So um, how does the subsidy um, manifest itself in the budget? The subsidy. You, so in other you words, if for annualized uh, <laughs> FY17, we're going to be short because obviously we lost the state. We lost the big tenants. Yeah, we lost the big tenants. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, the nice part is, I, I will say in looking at this, which is nice, is we come out of it a lot sooner than I would have thought, quite yeah. frankly, given the ACA's uh, rental rate. Um, which is which is great, but when I look down here and we've got the you know um, a P and L uh, for FY with uh, mm -hmm. with debt, how does how does the hundred and ten k or that's FY seventeen so we're already in that so I guess it's that's FY eighteen, right FY eighteen how is that going to present itself in the in the budget that forty thousand just out of the redevelopment board's budget? It just comes out of the redevelopment, okay. the urban renewal fund. Budget. The urban yes. renewal fund budget. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's all out of the urban, yeah, not the redevelopment board. Okay. The redevelopment board is 18,000 every year. <laughs> oh, and is this the yeah, URF end of year? Oh, this is the. Urban the renewal fund. <coughs> ah, yeah, okay. Because it's not a revolving account. Got it, got it, it's got a it. special fund. I've got it. Um, it's it's actually and it's separate from everything. Like that's that, that's right because we're the only. Separate from everything else because you're a redevelopment authority. Yes, of course. No, I. Yeah. So just to be clear, I love this because this is something that we we probably didn't have enough visibility to before. So, so in three great. years, we're out of we're out of the red. We're out of the red. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is nice. But it is a little tight right now. Yeah. And, but we're still um, maintaining. We maintain the three properties. No, but we maintain like we're not deferring any um, um, stuff to the buildings that were because of the, the shortfall. No. No. Okay. So all the life safety and all the rest is still maintained and you know. everything is yes okay. absolutely yeah and i actually this year working with fred lamburn who's mm -hmm. basically the building craftsman or superintendent 
Um, we worked out a preventative maintenance strategy, which will eventually roll into the way that the town is managing preventative maintenance for all town buildings, um, so that we know when things need to be replaced, we know when we need to do certain things at different properties. Doesn't mean that we always get it exactly right yet, but. <laughs> all I can say is, good job, this looks real good. Very good. It does. You know, for how long it's been going on, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. This is very good. So what are the, the capital projects in 18, 19, and 20? Um, so I don't have each year of the capital plan right in front of me, but the, for which property are you talking about? Any of them? Well, I'm, I'm just I'm looking at the uh, third line from the bottom for capital. Oh. So in like FY18, that $131,500, for example, yeah, that's going to go to um, a potential, depending upon the outcome of the Capital Plan Committee's recommendation, um, remodeling the kitchen, complete gut remodel of the kitchen at uh, 23 Maple Street. It's woefully outdated for the kind of commercial use that they put on that kitchen. It's basically mm. a residential facility. Okay. Okay, so... Um, though it's a residential facility, the level of use is more like a commercial kitchen. So we're going to be gutting the place and turning it into more of a commercial kitchen. And that's going to cost a lot of money. That's actually the most significant wow. cost next year. Um, and actually, the, that tenant is paying for the architectural fees, which is helping to offset some of the bigger cost. Um, but we're going to take care of the, depending upon the capital plan stuff. Um, the actual cost of construction. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, the. Um, Are you doing the driveway? I think actually the slate roof, the driveway reconstruction is this year. Okay. Okay, so we're completely reconstructing the driveway over at the Central School. That's a $200,000 project. That'll be wrapping up by the end of this fiscal year. And then uh, also, hopefully, wrapping up at the end of this fiscal year is the Academy Street stairs entrance. Um, you may have noticed. <laughs> you may have <laughs> lost a You may have fallen. <laughs> sorry, fallen through a hole on the <laughs> inside the building. Um, it's uh, in need of some dire repair. Basically, the stone is expensive and um, difficult to fix. Let's just leave it there. Um, so that's this year, but next year's the slate roof repairs at Central School. And then the other request, which does not reflect, is not here in $151,000, will be if the town decides to uh, bond money for the actual renovations. The first year, which is next year, we ask for $500,000 to get the design and construction doc documents for the central for the senior center. And then in the following years, we've asked for, I think, $2 million for FY19 and $2 million in FY20. For the actual renovation, that would be out of the town's regular budget. That's out of the town's or regular the capital budget, or, or some other capital yeah. budget, yeah. Not out of not the out of the town. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Jefferson Cutter House, um, you know from um, my talking with you about this at some previous meeting with Whittemore Park, we want to make some updates there. Mm -hmm. So that would be in a future capital plan, if depending upon the outcome of CPA money. And then we definitely need to make some interior updates, <coughs> particularly in, in the museum, for accessibility, like handicapped accessibility. Mm -hmm. So and that's pretty much the, in a thumbnail. There's actually, if you look in the capital plan budget, it tells you year over year how much is going where for each building. And it's, you can either find it through redevelopment board or planning okay. is how they tuck it away. CPA okay. money is rich this year. And next year, you know that, my wife. Yep, yeah. you got two or two years yeah. worth. And now's the time to. I've got the request in, so okay. we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that that was all. Okay, thank you. <coughs> all right, approval of meeting meeting, meeting minutes from December nineteenth, two thousand sixteen, January 9th, two thousand seventeen. I didn't have any changes, so. Okay. Good. You want to take them one at a time? Yeah, so beginning with December 19th, again, no changes. Anything else? Good. Okay. Move to approve minutes on December 19th. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 January 9th. No comments on that. Oh, actually, I do. <coughs> Title is listed as January 9th, 2016. Just changed it to 2017. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. Good call. It happens. I'm still. Oh, and actually, the other one as well. No, the other one's December. Right. Oh, it is December. That's right. Because it was December. Right. December. It was December. Yeah, exactly. We're not there yet. Hopefully. <laughs> 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 All right. I wasn't here for that. Move to approve the uh, meeting minutes as amended, January 9th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Before we adjourn tonight, I want to thank Mike Kerr for his six years of service. Thank on you. On the Arlington Redevelopment Board. It's been he a was pleasure. A, uh, big help to me when I first came on um, as I got thrust into the chairmanship. <laughs> thrust. I always made sure if uh, somebody else was sat next to me, I would switch here. Your name card so that you would be there to whisper instructions <laughs> to my ear if necessary. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm gonna have to do that to Andy for the time being. Good. But uh, thank you. Good. Well, thank you. It. It's been a it's been a great board to be a part of. I really appreciate, uh, especially uh, staff's uh, help with everything uh, that's gone on for the past six years. And uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think we've done some really good work. And I. I happen to know that this group is, is going to do great work. And I look forward to, uh, uh, well, if I'm elected, I guess, uh, 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 helping out in town meeting whenever I can. Good. All so, right. Come back anytime. Great. And Thanks. I, I want to say, since maybe I'm the oldest running person here, yeah. uh, Mike, you've just been great. Uh, it's been a great run, six years. Uh, large, small projects, everything. Um, I remember you talked about transparency when you came in. And I think you, you did that, and also you made us effective in a lot of different ways. Uh, part of it is your town meeting. Um, part of it is just your contribution and your clarity of thinking. Um, you, you seem very fair. Um, you bring a sense of purpose to the, to the board that was really appreciated. You look at the big picture, um, and you have a great sense of humor. You're great to work with. So. Uh, Congratulations for a great time. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's very nice. Well, appreciate right. it. I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.